So, recently I had the idea to do a photo shoot about looking up to your idols and what that would look like visually. Here's a sketch I made a couple weeks ago that kind of encapsulates the whole composition, vibe, and the sort of like visuals I'm going for. If the sketch still isn't selling it for you, it's pretty similar compositionally to this poster from John Wick. So, the mission for this video is to turn this sketch into reality by any means necessary. Now to do that, you'd think, hmm, you'd probably need a studio space, a whole bunch of expensive lights, and probably a whole lot of extras. Now, because I'm a moron and love making things difficult for myself, I'm going to be using none of that. Meaning I'm going to turn my living room into a studio space, use the lights I only have at hand, and instead of using extras, I'm going to clone myself. So to avoid fucking any of this up extensively, I'm going to do a proof of concept shoot. So I'm going to grab my friend Jaden, go downstairs into the backyard, and do a little bit of testing. Ah. So now it's time to do some testing. So the idea for this photo is to have eight people duplicated around in the circle and then one slightly raised above. So to do that, I have my lovely assistant Jaden here to help. Thank you, Jaden. So now we have the positioning roughly figured out. We need to do the actual math and map it out correctly. And in order to do that, we need to use pi. So it's onto the math section, how fun. Welcome, welcome. Besides teaching film, guess I now also teach really rudimentary grade seven math awfully. So what are we doing? Like all maths equations, we're solving for X. And in this case, X is the distance that the clones are from the center point, or more simply, the radius. Now, we also need to make sure the ring of eight clones isn't going to intersect with the main character because when you're ever doing something that's heavy in Photoshop, you want to pay as much respect to reality as possible. Meaning, if they're not going to overlap in real life, don't do it. So first things first is we need to define our limitation. Now, the limitations for this is that the main character's stance is 100 centimeters wide. Meaning using pi, we can figure out the circumference of the main character is 314 centimeters. Therefore, the ring of clones needs to be greater than 314 centimeters for this to work. Now, each one of the clones is just my shoulder width here, which is 50 centimeters across. Times that by eight, that gives us our circumference of 400 centimeters. Now, if you can't tell, 400 is a lot bigger than 314. Therefore, clipping won't be an issue. This will all work out in reality quite nicely. So now using that circumference, we need to figure out our X, which is our radius. So to find that, we divide our circumference of 400 by pi. Now that gives us a diameter of 127.3 centimeters. Now to find our radius, we just divide that by two, which is rounding up 64 centimeters. So now we know the clones won't clip, we can just go outside and mark it. And we know the markings need to be 64 centimeters out from the center point, And each one of those outer rings needs to be 50 centimeters apart. So all we need to do now is go outside, mark Mark it out, test it. Good as place as any to start, I reckon. This fucking guy. They should be 50 centimeters apart each. Oh, they are too, fucking well. So now we have the actual markers set up, it's time to shoot the thing. But before we shoot it, we need a marker for this cunt's head. That's why we got this. Your Jaden head stand in. Excellent. If it's good enough for Marvel, it's good enough for me. Thanos head, Jaden head. Filmmaking, ladies and gentlemen, photography. Love to see it. The rough composition, huh? Okay, yeah, this is actually more of the composition I think. Go down to your knees with it because I know how to pull. The first time I heard that. Work your baby work. Nice. Uh, tell me if I'm in frame real quick. <laughs> So now we're done actually testing it. Uh, it looks really, really good. It looks like it actually will work out just as I planned. The only difference um, that you can see on camera that we did change was the fact that I was way too close. I thought 50 mil was the right millimeter to shoot this on to get the right compression. So I ended up moving the tripod thing back for like extra two and a half meters than I thought. So it's roughly like a four meter distance from the subject. It looks good. I think we'll play around and test it out now. So off to upstairs. Done. And I can say resounding success. It works. We're on the right track. So, that being said, let's have a look at the very first photo to see how it actually turned out fresh out of camera. And that's this. Now, you can see it's a little bit wide, a lot wider than envisioned, and it's also a little bit boring. So, that being said, I went in and I got the second photo, which was this. So, this was the second photo I got for playing around for test images. Now, if you can't tell, I made everything a little bit more tight. And so what I did was I moved the outside clones in, the clones in the foreground down, and the clones in the background up. Now this is for two reasons. One, this was to fill in all those gaps between the shoulders and also make the circle of people go from something like this to something like this, so you could see it a little bit better. Now, this is pretty fucking spot on. This is pretty close to what I had in mind and really no other changes other than one small change, and that's this. So. This is the third version of said test photo. Now, if you can't tell, I've added two extra clones. 
and basically this was just to fill in the foreground because I thought the foreground just looked a little bit dead and after referring back to the actual drawing I made for this I realized I had two people drawn in the very foreground and it's just kind of filled in that lower portion of the frame. Now this is for all intents and purposes done. I could photoshop the fuck out of this and call it a day but I want to do hair makeup and lighting and all that stuff. So if that all being said I think it's time to go shoot the damn thing. But anyway, quick lighting breakdown. The idea for this is a very subtle, dark and moody sort of vibe. And at the moment, if you can't tell, it kind of looks really lit up and kind of bright because there's fucking lights everywhere. But in general, it's not what it looks like in camera once you get shooting because when I'm doing a camera, it's going to stop it down quite a lot by like three or four stops. So that what you're seeing here is going to be significantly darker in photo. But anyway, so this is the lighting stuff. We have Aperture 200D, another Aperture 200D, both at 1% power, which is fucked. The hair light for it, which is the 32 Kelvin. Right here, we got the glorious, glorious gaff job. Thoughts? I've never done better. Perfect diamond. So I still don't have a Fresnel, and so that's still in this, if you can't tell. Beautiful diamond. So that right there is what it is, basically acting as is a huge bounce light and a huge softbox. If I was in a studio, I would love to have an actually rigged softbox with an eggshell crate and a bunch of pancakes around the side. It would be really nice, but we don't have that. What we do have is a white ceiling. So we're gonna use a white ceiling. And all that culminates into this. Oh, shit. <laughs> But that's what this all does. And then finally, we've got the camera probably gonna be up there. Now all we gotta do is do the measurements again, been through this before, put the markers on the ground, measure it all out. Not gonna change too much from that. Measure shit on a floor, semi-accurately baby. To think I was actually one of the gifted and talented kids in that, and this is what it's got me. Yeah, I'm sure you're definitely putting the special classes. That's just not called for my life. <laughs> I was not the special you're thinking of. You know, I have a really bad headache at the moment. It's probably from dealing with you, Cunt. It's not my problem. At least you're honest. Alright, time for costuming, time to get all changed up, different hairstyles and shit, and set the camera up and we're good to go. There's no particular reason I'm shirtless right now. God, it's going on the internet. I gotta think about my actions more. You may be wondering what we're doing in my gross bathroom. And that's doing hair and makeup. Get in here, mate, get in here. You want some wet? You can see your balls part. Oh, nice. <laughs> Oh, it's like the Joker. Ow, ow. You do kind of look like Christian Bale from fucking American Psycho right now. It's <laughs> Paul Allen's Joker pick. <laughs> ventilation, ventilation. <laughs> oh, I've got that like 1700s time old fucking haircut. Like, yes. It's gonna like rip. Right, I think we're ready to shoot, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, oh, oh, start shooting. Yeah, so that was the main part done. That was like the most important photo was to get like the uh, evil, maniacal looking motherfucker in the middle. So now I'm gonna try to wash a little bit of this stuff off and then basically just wrap myself in a little scarf. Where is it? Where, where, oh. So this is pretty much like the look of the ooh, uh, part now. So I'm just gonna change like a little eye bandage. Um, just change the look, go around and shoot each single one. But yeah, this is going really well. I like how it's turned out so far. Jane's doing a good job shooting. So that's not bad. You're done. All going good. So let's get back to shooting, shall we? Oh, look at mine. General, ugly, but for this. shooting I just did the little ring around there now it's time to bring everything got on the camera here upstairs into Photoshop and play around and finish this photo so hopefully this doesn't look like shit when I get into the editing and if it does I'm going to edit the fuck out of it until it doesn't so that being said time to edit. so like all my photos I start out by doing the color grading first all I did was pump in a bunch of blue into the midtones and the highlights then just use the HSL qualifier as well as the color calibration panel to really just fix up the skin tones and make sure it doesn't look too out of place so here I'm cutting out the main character and then bringing in all the clones and rinsing and repeating and cutting all them out too then it's the real fun part of just going in and refining the edge mask using the roto tools then after that i really go in and find detail and just paint out all the individual strands of hair and clean up anything the ai isn't good enough to pick up on 
now it's time to go and add the fun stuff like the halo above my head here. So for this, it was pretty straightforward. Basically just use a solid, turn it into a ring, and then using the glow and the transform settings, I turned it into a halo. And then using a bit of creative masking, I just kind of painted away at it and made it look like it was disintegrating. Now after that, it's time for the finishing touches where I go in, dodge and burn the photo using the curves tool. Basically paint in brighter parts where I want it to be brighter, darker parts where I want it to be darker, and bring out the contrast using the paintbrush. And after all that, the photo's pretty much finished. So, looks like we've caught up with the end of this story. And I guess without further ado, here's the photo. I call this one, Lost Men Seek False Prophets. And I'm shocked, like usual, these things end up working out because as you can see, it looks really fucking good. But no, it was made by some idiot and his mate in their living room, just fucking around. So in terms of the composition, it worked really well. It literally looks exactly like how I had it in my mind and how I had the first sketch. <laughs> Resounding success, I fucking worked and it looks really sick. I didn't really talk about the lighting too much. Pretty much all I wanted to do was two backlights to separate from the background. Um, a really nice soft overhead key, which is just pretty standard for what you'd expect this sort of look to have in a huge studio space. Space. and then the only other thing was just a little practical hair light to you know match the halo and then onto the editing the editing was once again pretty straightforward just color correction and then chuck it into photoshop which you expect would have been the hard part but it was really just boring a lot of it was just masking then the actual artistic part was just dragging clones in other than that it was one of the easier photoshop things i've done which is surprising because it shouldn't be it looks very complicated and technically is but one of those things looks complicated but just tedium it's just a lot of labor um nothing really spectacular so this photo is really cool to me not just because it looks cool and it's just something to look at and scroll past but it's a departure for me from just being a content creator but to someone who's more of an artist i just really wanted to say more do more and express more instead of just making something cool to look at i can make something cool to think about and feel about good stuff I enjoyed it, had a lot of fun doing this. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to go follow me here on Instagram. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Other than that, if you liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, other than that, I've been Lawson and you've been watching and I've been appreciative. Thank you, bye-bye.